to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, to cherish, until death do us part. And then a priest or deacon says, what God has joined together, no human must separate. For those who may not remember their vows when they got married, this is one of the options that are said. So obviously in the readings today, we hear the question of marriage and divorce and where the, where the uh, origin of marriage is and, and what has happened. Marriage is one of those things that really, it crosses all boundaries. It's not a Catholic thing. It's not a Jewish thing. All religions, all even secular governments recognize marriage. It's one of these things that are in our natural, it's a, a natural law. It's within our hearts. God implanted this desire for marriage within us. So there's a lot of confusion on what, what is the same and what is the difference in marriages. Like if you go to a civil marriage, it's more like a contract or a, you know, we're going to promise to try to live together and we get all these legal rights that we now have because we're married civilly. Or if you go to other religions, they have different faiths or different think, thoughts of, of eternity and, and what a marriage is. The Jewish and the Christian laws are very similar in what a marriage is. It's a covenant. It's an agreement, not just be, between the husband and the wife, but there's three people involved, the husband, the wife, and God. So this is a covenant that is supposed to last through the, the life of the couple. So the, of course, through time, as long as marriages have happened, marriages have broken up. So this question of divorce came up, and this is what the Jewish people, uh, Pharisees, were asking Jesus about. He said, well, you know, we know that divorce is a reality. Is it, is it legal? Can we do this? And if you dig into Jesus' answer, he answers it by saying, within the law, it's legal. But it was made legal because of the hardness of the hearts that Moses allowed this. This wasn't what God had invented. God had invented marriage. God didn't invent divorce. That was a, uh, an invention of, of people. Moses allowed divorce to happen within their culture because when people would take this, make this bond and then they decided, well, it wasn't working out for whatever reason, there were horrible ways that they were getting out of the vows. So Moses said, we can't allow that to happen, so we'll allow divorce because that's the lesser of two evils. But Jesus goes back to the origin of humanity before sin entered the world, before corruption came into the world to define how God wanted marriage, what God's vision was. And he, so we hear the story of, of Adam and then the end of Eve. And he, we hear that this is why a man leaves his family and, cl and clings to his wife, and the two become flesh. So keeping this in mind, this is God's vision of marriage. And, you know, we think about, well, why is it that way? If you think about the role of marriage in society... It does many things. One, I mean, it, it forms a very stable family. It forms a stable society. And it forms, um, you know, basically order and chaos. Although, you know, with a family, it's hard to say that there's order in a family. <laughs> but it's more ordered than if we didn't have this and everyone just went willy-nilly. So I want to touch on the Catholic vision of marriage and how it relates to God's original vision back in Genesis. So as Catholics, we believe, as God did, that it's a covenant. It's not just, that, like I said before, it's not just a man and a woman making a contract to try hard to live together, but it's an agreement with God. God has to be the center of our marriage. He has to, otherwise it doesn't, it just, it doesn't work out the same way. So our line, our vision is this covenant for life. We treat marriage as a sacrament. Now, sacramental marriage is different than a contract. Because of it's a covenant and because God is involved and sacraments are permanent, marriages are permanent. So when we make this uh, uh, the ceremony and we have this sacrament, it moves everything up a notch into the divinity. And as a sacrament, if you remember what a sacrament is, 
uh, think about your definitions of what you heard in faith formation in school. A sacrament is a visible sign of an invisible reality of God's grace working in your lives. So a visible sign of, of the invisible reality of God in our life. So how is marriage a sacrament? I can think of three ways that marriage is a visible image of God's grace working in our lives. The first is that a marriage actually is an image of the Trinity itself. Now think about that for a minute. An image of the Trinity itself, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. One of the natures of the Trinity is creation, right? The love of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Through that love, everything came into being by will and by just by thought and by a word spoken, everything came into being, creation. So God created all things due to this love. So how is this image in a marriage? The marriage In a marriage, the love between a husband and a wife, creation happens, children, right? Or at least the attempt for children. This is the only way that people can share in the nature of the creative nature of the Trinity. God allows us to cooperate in his sole job of creation to create another human being. We are a part of this. He allows us to be a part of this. And within our marriage, if we have God as our center and realize all this happens when these children come into the world, it's like just such an amazing gift. We see that as our love produces a child, we produced and helped with God to make another individual who is in the image and likeness of God. So we created another person for God by cooperating with him. So we image the, the creative nature of the Trinity. The second image is the body of Christ. Now the body of Christ, when we say that, we mean the whole church. So Christ is among us within our community. Christ is among us in the word, in the word and Christ is among us in the tabernacle in the Eucharist. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, I am there among them. So in a marriage, when you have two or more, you have a husband and a wife gathered in the name of Jesus. Jesus is among them. He's with them. He's part of that family. Then, of course, with children, you have more and more and more. He's among you even more. So within this marriage, within God being present with the two or more, it's a small church. The Catholic Church and the Catechism actually re refers to marriage and family as the domestic church. It's the foundation for all of the churches because with those two, Christ is present in them, in their lives, in their homes. As they're growing together, as they're learning together, as they're worshiping God, God is their center. That is the basis for all our church. So the domestic church, all the domestic churches that I see out here, right, we form our parish, that our parish forms our diocese, then our diocese is part of the universal church. But it all starts with the domestic church. It all starts with Christ being present in the families that I see here. So the image of church is also the image of marriage. The third image I could think of is Christ on the cross, his self-sacrifice, his giving of himself for all of us. Now for me, you look at marriage, this is the hardest part and the part that I struggle with. A husband sacrifices himself for his wife and his children, and a wife sacrifices herself for her husband and her children. It's the giving of yourself to say, it's not about me anymore. It's about my family. It's about my wife. I have to give everything I have to them and vice versa. The wife gives everything she has to the family. So it's sacrificing what you had, the things that you maybe were doing beforehand, your time, your effort, the things that you do are now given to the family. It's no longer yours. It's your family's time. This is, like I said, one thing I struggle with. You know, you work hard all day long, you get home, you just want to pop open a beer, watch some football, and just kind of hang out. But that's not really sacrificing, right? That's me doing what I want. So then I neglect my family, 
in order to do the things that I want to do to decompress. So I'm not self-sacrificing. Christ gives us this vision. You know, he didn't pop open a beer. He said, I'm going to go on that cross and I'm going to give myself for all of you because this is a way that I can fulfill you. So it's always a struggle. And this is why we need Christ at the center. I can't do it on my own. If I didn't have the grace of God in me, I couldn't do it at all. Um, you know, you all know that I've, I've had conversion experiences years ago, which brought me back to the church. So I've been married without that and married with it. And having Christ in my life and Christ in my marriage is infinitely better. Now, I'm not saying that it's every day is better. You know, we have our struggles. We do everything that, you know, that everybody else, we experience everything that everybody else has. Um, one of my favorite sayings is it's not all rainbows and unicorns, right? There's struggles. There's uh, hard times. There's good times. There's bad. But because of Christ in my marriage, in our marriage, we can make it through. He gives us the strength for that. So I just implore everybody today, if you're married, um, if you're young and you think you're going to be married someday, just... Just pray for the strength of God to be in your marriage and to be able to live and fulfill your life the way that he intended to, the original vision of marriage. When we come to communion, ask for the grace to get through the hard times. And then praise God for all the good times, all the gifts. You know, something, it's, it's easy to, to look at the negative all the time, but there's so many great gifts that maybe we go unappreciated. Thank him and praise him for those gifts as well. And think of your vows that you said, and just kind of in your mind, pray them and renew them in your own mind and just say, you know what, I'm going to try to live my life and my marriage the best I can with the grace of God. The other version of the vows are, I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and honor you all the days of my life. What God has joined together, let no human separate.